Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 179. This episode is with Don Marshall, who you may know best as the obscure Lord of the Rings facts guy on TikTok. Don is great, and I had a blast hanging out with him. In this episode, we talk about how he used to be an investigative journalist for a news station, the crazy hours he worked and wild situations he got into as a reporter, the special way he was introduced to the Lord of the Rings, how he got started on TikTok, the origins of Ye Isildur, if you know, you know, his new tabletop RPG series where he explores what actually would have happened if the Fellowship had taken the Eagles to Mordor, who his favorite Lord of the Rings character is, and so much more. I even got to ask him a couple lore questions of my own. Pretty exciting. Don is such a good dude, and you're going to love him. Be sure to check out his Patreon and his Twitch channel to stay in the loop with all the awesome things he's up to, and there's a lot of them. But before you do that, please enjoy this episode of the Interesting Podcast, number 179, with Don Marshall. Theme song time. Just know, I'm going to keep checking in. <laughs> as, as, as you should. As you should. That is how you do business. I'm a former journalist. So my, oh, really? My, yeah. My my background of cold calling people and asking them to talk to me on camera is literally sure. what I did for a living. <laughs> really? What did you do it for? Uh, I was an investigative journalist for about three and a half years at what? a station out in the Midwest. And then... Um, got a reporting job closer to home. And then um, like many uh, neurodivergent former gifted kids, I got burnt sure. out because I uh -huh. dedicated my whole life to it. Now I'm like, <laughs> ooh, this isn't fun anymore. The endorphins aren't tingling. I need sure. to get out. So I needed that uh, creative process. And and here I am. Sorry, these are probably questions you have for me. I don't no, want to give away I don't too have, much. I don't have questions, Don. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to, this is what I do. I just say, I didn't know about that. That's cool. <laughs> Tell me more about it and go on for 15 Genuinely. minutes. Yeah. This is what yeah. I'm here for. Mm. Investigative journalism, like for a newspaper? Uh, uh, new station, actually two of them. Uh, what? the ABC, yeah, the ABC and the, uh, CBS affiliate, uh, got merged because they got bought out sure. uh, by the same company. And so we were literally like one day we were competition and then the next day we were working together as wow. like the same team. Uh, and of course there was a favorite child and I was fortunate enough to be um, working for the favorite child. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it helped. <laughs> um, but yeah, literally as, as we were talking, I was like, Oh yeah. Cold calling. I, I did that yeah. <laughs> to every police officer and mayor and uh, city council what? member and just random. I mean, I I have lots of phone numbers of known drug dealers and sure. like convicted felons and murderers and people that have, you know, most of whom have since flipped their life around and now do advocacy work for, sure. you know, societal change. But uh, you always got to have a few, a few bad eggs. In oh, the, dude, uh, that's where yeah, I grew up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Now I I'm learning in, more about you. I grew up in those neighborhoods. <laughs> oh, so I'm, okay. That's why I'm vastly interested right now. I'm like, so wait a second. So, okay, I have a question. That's okay. In my go head. Ahead. Yeah. No. Go ahead. How did you come up with your stories? Like, what you wanted to pursue? Did you get like assignments, or was it like, oh, so, follow the sirens? Oh God. Uh, oh. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's dance, Don. Let's let's dance. Um. So nine times out of ten, I will have had to figure out my own stories for the day. I come wow. in pitch a couple of story ideas and you know i'm reading every newspaper every article i'm part of 15 different facebook groups and they're all yeah am i allowed to swear on this one yeah of course yeah we're all shit talk they're everybody shit talking to each other and they're like yeah no this one's <laughs> terrible and that city council member's corrupt no it's actually this one there's a conspiracy local conspiracy theories on town halls oh, yeah. are <laughs> insane local <laughs> politics are nuts but no joke there was one day when uh i was pulling in to my station from lunch and I watch as seven cop cars, sirens blazing, pull up behind me. And the day before, uh, some local, uh, I'm, I'm 
I'm not supposed to reveal where I used to work just for sure, legal sure. and privacy of reasons. Of course. Um, but they had lost, uh, the U.S. Marshals had been tracking someone of interest and the local cops got involved and they lost the person. Oh, and no. there was a very large manhunt and about 36 hours of craziness. So when I see seven cop cars going by me, doing a UB in the parking lot, I'm like, <laughs> listen, uh, my my news director at the, or my assignment editor at the time, I was like, look, I think something's going down. I'm going to follow these sirens. So I'm literally doing like... I'm not going to admit that publicly how fast I was going in a residential area, <laughs> sure. but I was following the cops. So, you know, no I one really, it. yeah, I mean, I was in a marked station van, so nobody really even questions it at that point. It's like, oh, there That's goes amazing. the news and the cops. Yeah, it's a it's a wild ride. That's got to be kind quite of literally. Yeah. Uh, it, listen, I will I will say. I needed a creative outlet for my sure. TikTok stuff. And this has been amazing. And I am so much happier. And I, you know, sleep a full eight hours a day and I'm not working overnights or weekends. <laughs> sure. Um, but there is nothing like yeah. live television. The the snowstorms, the hurricanes, the microbursts, the the I mean the the crime, honestly. And I know that's sure. not something I should relish in, but like when there is a, a manhunt or a police chase or uh, you know, some sort of I, I went to uh, go look for a, a crashed single engine plane in the middle of the woods one time. What? Took me about took me about three hours to find the crash site where they, uh, where they you did up. find it. Yeah, we found it. Me and the other uh, guy from the competing station we were driving around. And we at one point we crossed each other on the road and we're like, we just had that moment <laughs> where we look at each other left and right. And so I do a quick turnaround, like a hundred yards down, and I see he's doing the exact same thing. And we pull over, and we're like, "Do you have any idea where this is?" I'm like, "I have no idea." All right, so we're gonna look <laughs> together. We're gonna ask everybody local in town. It's like, you ever heard of a plane crash for around here? And it just Dude. let's just say there's a lot of cars that are not meant to go through the woodlands, and <laughs> sure. we push those cars to the limit, <laughs> as you should. Journalistic integrity, Don. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, listen, uh, journalistic integrity is is one thing, but uh, trying to explain to your boss why half of the white car is covered in a very <laughs> dark mud when it didn't necessarily sure. need to be. It's like we need to get that wash. That's a representation of our company. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the story. Southern, yeah, I think that Southern accent, by the way, just I like it. My, thank you. I thank like you. it. It's a, you're, you're throwing us off the trail because like what accent where's that from okay, yeah okay well you know sometimes when I, he was out in california he would yeah. just adopt <laughs> this valley girl thing and <laughs> did y'all find that plane crash or we did we did <laughs> that's wild i'm picturing it as like twister when you have like the multiple weather crews you know yep. like yeah you find it <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. And that we we actually did have a situation like that happen where uh, a microburst hit over the course of like a half hour. We lost power to about 50 percent of our viewing area um, because there was a I don't know if you know what um, straight winds are. I think mm -hmm. I'm using that term correctly. I used to be a, a weatherman as well. They kind of not like a me, not like a meteorologist. They were just like, here, memorize what the weather guy said at four o'clock. Sure. And repeat what he said at five. And <laughs> right. I'm like, oh, OK, sure. Here's uh, the graphics. I guess I know how they work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of gesturing broadly yeah. to a green screen. Now I do it professionally. -ish. Right. Um, Full circle. <laughs> yeah, it really. Oh, no, it really is. It really is. No, TikTok. I will say this. TikTok has just become the perfect microcosm of what I did as a reporter, because yeah. every day I would go into work and I'd be like, all right, I have one minute and 30 seconds to tell my story and I need sound bites. Oh, my and I and I really like writing and you know, in a very narcissistic way, pretty much everybody on TikTok has to at some point appreciate the sound of their own voice. Sure. And sure. I I will admit fully that I got very narcissistic towards the end of my <laughs> of my journalism career. It's like I am a great writer. I tell the best I stories. Mean... I don't need to hear from those real people, <laughs> right. which in essence was, you know, my head was so far up my ass at that point. I didn't right. even know which way was up. Um, but yeah, TikTok has just taught me that all of the skills I learned in journalism can be boiled down to uh, using your phone and sure. being relatable. Yeah, it's uh, one of one of my TikTok mutuals uh, under the desk news. Oh yeah, uh, she, they go by great v. hair. F oh, great hair, <laughs> phenomenal. Best. It's like what John Stamos always dreamed of, yeah. but for the twenty first century. For real. 
And, and like, I look at people like V and the pocket report and all of these people doing like the bite-sized chunks of news that make it digestible. And I'm like, that's what I should have been doing in 2016, 2015, I don't even remember at this point. But sure. It's, it's is crazy. To, uh, the pandemic has warped all sense of reality. For yeah. Me. Yeah. Same. And I was bad at it before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I have an excuse at least. Exactly. can relate like the pandemic. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, that, that's that the thing. reason. That 100%. Thing. The before times don't exist. We're still I mean, in the times. We are still in. Yeah. What's what's that? That ancient. I think it's like an ancient uh, curse from some. I don't even remember where it's from, but it's like, may you live in interesting times is actually a curse because yeah. instead of living in peaceful <laughs> times, you're like, oh, this is interesting. Ooh, yeah. And everybody's a- like. That's a bless your heart kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I was I was going to equate it to that weird white person smile everybody does. Oh like yeah. The, mm, 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 mm. yeah, I know everybody can't see me, but I think this is for me knows. and you. Yeah, that's <laughs> the face I'm making should should qualify. That's so wild to me. That is there like a is there like a bullpen where like there's stories and people are competing? Is it who gets there first? Was it newspaper? Like- uh, oh, <laughs> uh, the newspaper in my. Uh, in my uh, original town where I was first getting started um, had been there a while, but I mean, when you're a local newspaper, you have to transition with the times and everybody's on their phone. So it Mm. it wasn't necessarily easy for them to do that. I did have friends at that paper though. They were very good uh, reporters. Cool. But I think the uh, it's, it's not necessarily anymore always about who's first. It's about who you like more. And I know that sounds kind of superficial, but um, I mean, like in the modern age of Twitter and Facebook Mm -hmm. headline articles, you're not you see the news breaking on Twitter and then you go to the people that you trust. And the way you gain that trust is not necessarily by being first, but by posting that relatable moment as a reporter right and it becomes uh, in all honesty it's it's not a it's not a popularity contest to a degree Mm -hmm. um but in a way there is this sort of form of like how personal can you be with the uh i mean our our target demographic was women age 35 to 55 with two kids yeah and it was yeah, and it was one of those moments where, like, we had to sort of appeal to this mass audience, but also recognize that tr- the transition was coming of, you know, I mean, let me ask you this. Do you have a cable subscription? I do not. I don't either. And yeah. I think a lot of people, I mean, I'm, I'm almost 30. I don't know how old you are. I'm, but I'm 30. Okay, cool. Yep. Yeah, I, I feel like a lot of people our age are are cutting the cord and the, the cable, you know, Comcast has changed and sure. Xfinity and NBC has transitioned and Netflix is, you know, the, the mm-hmm. legacy media, Amazon Prime. Uh, we'll talk about the Amazon TV show eventually and get to yes, Lord of the Rings will. stuff. But yes, this, <laughs> this is but about no. Don Marshall. I don't know if you caught that yet. <laughs> I, I did, which is so weird because I'm here for you, I, pal. I, I appreciate <laughs> it. No, because it is it is nice. And and as as humble as I try and be, there is a narcissistic side of me that's like, ooh, <laughs> they like me. Right. They really like me. I My whole thing is I can't even really explain it. So like with the show, it's called The Interesting Podcast. And oh, I've listened to a few. Yes. Yeah. You have not. Stop it. I don't believe Ahmed you. Best? Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. That's a name mm-hmm, that's on mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm. I, see, I don't know how to take that when anyone has done that. <laughs> <laughs> here's here's what you do, because yes, I have go. been on Teach the me. opposite side of that. Teach right? Me. Okay. You say, Oh, hey, that's very kind of you. Thank you very much. Oh, and hey, we, we move on. Thank you very much. Yeah, there you go. There you go. See? Back Lines. and forth. We got it. <laughs> Everything is a script. Like we, I, we are being a perform- right. performers right now. As you can see, I'm terrible at interviewing. I So my whole <laughs> thing is I follow my gut, right? I don't. Mm-hmm. I can't explain it. And there has hmm. to be something. I'll usually follow someone for quite some time to mm-hmm. kind of get a feel. And I'm like, do I want to get to know this person? Because mm-hmm. my whole thing is like Ahmed Best, right? You know yes. Jar Jar. Yes. You don't you don't know the guy. No. After listening to my show, you know the guy. That's what you I do. do. You do. And, and that, so that's with a you, great way to I was do like, it. I love Lord of the Rings and I've mm-hmm. been following you since very early on. I was like, this guy's really cool. And I, I don't even remember what exactly it was, but something <laughs> happened and I was like, Oh no, for sure. Please, please say yes to hang out with me for an hour. And you did. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because I get I get emails. Uh, every so often 
about people who, I mean, there is a certain boundary that I will not cross about like, Hey, do you want to be friends? I'm like, cool. It's a parasocial relationship, sure. dude. But like right. for people that, that have the platforms and want to mm-hmm. talk in this sort of like, you know, in essence, we are performers right now. We're not like our, our, uh, I'm not being my true authentic self, right? Otherwise I'd be having an anxiety <laughs> attack every five minutes, but you know, um, <laughs> or just, you know, forgetting where I am, uh, sure. got, di- got diagnosed with ADHD a couple of months ago. That was Welcome a fun Welcome to the one. club, my friend. Ah, mazel yep. tov. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It I just raised, I, we're raising our glass <laughs> yes, to yes, people indeed. listening. Indeed. Yeah. This is not water. Oh, mm-hmm. vinegar. I see. Okay. Yes. Yes, indeed. <sighs> <laughs> and this isn't just pepsi that's right live your best life man that's what i'm here for <laughs> you're not alone excellent but that's that was the whole thing is like i wanted to get to know you and that's why i don't come in with questions and i tell a lot of people like i promise you 30 seconds in you'll realize it is not an interview <laughs> if you're expecting any standard of quality just you're gonna have a bad time my friend <laughs> forget every preconceived <laughs> notion you've ever had right just kick it we're just it's gonna different. kick it it's different. Like, who do you a it. reporter? That's so cool. Every single time I tell people, they're like, no, really? Right? Cause I, don't, I mean, that's just a part of my life that like I reference every once sure. in a while. And I will say, I, I don't know when this is going public, um, but we're filming this in the mid March, but yep. Um, it is, uh, we're, we are, I think nine or 10 days into the Ukraine situation <laughs> and yeah. it has taken every single ounce of my willpower to stay in my lane of oh, TikTok bet. because I know how to identify yeah. fake or misleading it. Like like every picture of Zelensky that you have seen in mm-hmm. combat gear is from 2021. And almost all of the, uh, you know, uh, Russian soldiers are probably doing so under coercion, right? Like it's sure in in my speculative journalistic mind, it is all propaganda. And so to see the things that I'm seeing on TikTok, sure, where all of these people are just like mindlessly commenting, like, I can't believe this is actually happening. I'm like, that's not a video from Ukraine in 2022. That's from Syria. Right. There's very little sand and right. dunes. And that, that that little girl, there was a little girl that went viral, I think, four or five days ago that it's a picture of a of a uh, little uh, girl, like nine or 10 years old, like uh, attempting to punch or standing up to a, an I think it's either an Israeli or Palestinian soldier. One side of the conflict was, sure. you know, going up against the other and this little girl. And I'm like, there's no sand dunes in where they're shelling Ukraine. And I'm right. like, I, I so desperately want to like get on my, on my platform and be like, I need to use this for good. But at the same time, right. I know that there are people like under the desk news and pocket report and the Washington post folks that are doing a great job. And the, the best I can do is, you know, duet those and repost those and make sure that people are, are thinking, make sure that people in my community are thinking critically because I don't have the, the, you know, if I tell people, well, I'm a former journalist, so I know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> sure. That just comes off as like so brash and abrasive. It's like, oh, I see. He's trying to flex on us and right. be like that. Yeah. But if I can, if I can at least spread the word of those that have that credibility that I yeah. used to have because I can identify it, it, hopefully, you know, there's a, there's always a small modicum of me that was like, I really hope I'm making a difference, even if it's, sure. if it's just to one person. Really? I get it. Did yeah. you always want to be a reporter? I did competitive speech and debate when I was in um, high school. Cool. And, you know, I knew from a very early age, I loved to talk. I was very vocal as a kid. Sure. And um, as I've mentioned, loved the sound <laughs> of my own voice. And I, I'd like to think I've dialed that back a bit. It's better um, than hating it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so senior year of high school, I took a print journalism class. I'm like, I can do this better, but with a video camera. So I started a YouTube channel with a buddy of mine and um, we just kind of kept it going and get it. um, I just never really stopped, got to college, did my college um, news station, did my college sports TV station and uh, wound up getting my first job about six or seven months out of college as a reporter. And Wow. Uh, I would say never looked back, but I immediately <laughs> stopped after about four years because I was working <laughs> overnights on the weekends and then evenings during the weekdays. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. I had Monday. I had Monday and Tuesday off. I worked three to 11 Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Ooh. and then I worked overnights or no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I worked overnights 
Saturday, Sunday, and worked evenings, three to 11, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, had off Thursday, Friday, so I could reset my sleep schedule Ooh. to go back in on Friday at uh, midnight. Not sustainable. It, no, it's really it. not. And and I, I, I'm not sure whereabouts you live, but I would urge anybody listening and yourself, turn on, turn on your local news station or like Google the ages and, the, you know, go on your local news station website and see who the reporters are, see how old or how young they are, because they are either bright-eyed bushy-tailed just out of college <laughs> and desperate for twitter followers like i was sure or they are in their 40s 50s and 60s and have been in the game so long that they don't know how to get out and that was kind of sure. like the baseline for me and every other person i went to college with I'm like are you seeing this too and like yeah are you are you seeing this and i was like yeah and then of course uh, a buddy of mine uh got a job at, at espn like a year ago and he's like nice this is not this is not anything I've ever done before. This is not oh. local news. It's like an empire, dude. It's crazy. Oh. Yeah. Really? I don't I don't have any insider secrets in Sports sure. Center, unfortunately. But... I don't know anything about sports. So <laughs> I, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know some sports require balls and there are rules. Um, mm. I was much more into the uh the, the fantasy side of existence. Uh, clearly from your background. Um, you know. Okay, yeah. so let me break let me break down sports for you. So there's okay. football, but then there's also uh -huh. football. They're uh -huh. different sports, but they're kind of the same thing because sometimes okay. you use your foot with one and then sometimes you don't with the oh. other. Oh, okay. Got it. Makes total sense. Yeah. And then there's cricket, the bug, and then cricket, yes. the sport. Oh. Um, yeah. And they play the sport? Uh, yeah, it's professional crickets uh, league. You know what? I just got super interested. <laughs> <laughs> that's all i need now is just like some sort of life-size <laughs> animatronic that's right i want to see surrealist. a bug's life changed into just cricket <laughs> did they did they make a bug's life too because i feel like there's a potential they for made, a spin -off they there. made ants which was kind of like that's a right. much they were darker version <laughs> they were different studios though weren't they right? yes. like one of them was pixar and one of them was fox and they yep. were both like they came out the like, same year <laughs> they did oh but you know what and it's so funny because a friend of mine actually just sent me uh, the the person I started a YouTube channel with actually, uh -huh. um, they they came out there was they sent me a video that was like the deconstruction of ants versus a bug's life and oh. like <laughs> ants is all about how the violence inherent in the system and the societal and fundamental flaws need to be changed from the inside because the system is the problem right and then the uh, the bug's life is like all of these outside forces, which is essentially, in essence, a police state. So they kind of mirror each other, but are vastly oh. different in how they handle like like a bug's life is French Revolution. Right. 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 And ants is. Uh, uh, oh, God, the first thing that came to mind was designated survivor. <laughs> but that doesn't feel right at all because that bunch of you know, you know, the entire system got overthrown. I'm, I'll think of something eventually. Sure. We've got another 45 <laughs> minutes left in this session. I'm sure something where violence is, oh God, that's the other thing. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Come Pops. see the violence inherent in the system. Come see the violence yep. inherent. Yeah, it's that. It's that. Yeah. <laughs> what are the odds that that would be brought up? Look at the, look at the cosmic I, timing here, Don. Seriously, that's think about this. amazing timing. This is what that I we would be sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> I facilitate the nonsense and then make you it make sent sense. my friend that video. <laughs> I did. He's actually my friend now. <gasps> How dare you? <laughs> God, don't get me started on the science fiction side of things. I bet. I bet. I do. Yeah. Have, so obviously I can't hang out with you and not talk about Lord of the Rings. I mean, I, I mean we, we're already 15, 20 minutes you into know? this. I'm surprised. Are we? Got oh, there's already. a clock. You're right. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> I am curious, what were you first into the books or were you first into the movies? Ah, this is, I love telling the story and I think I've told it on every podcast I've been a part <laughs> of, but it is such, it is so integral to my story that I can't not. Okay, cool. I didn't watch the movies or read the books first. Really? My, my mom read the books and thought that I would like them because I had grown up reading Chronicles of Narnia and sure. Red Wall and all of these, Great. you know, fantasy stories. Mm -hmm. And she thought I might like them. And I was approaching like nine or 10 years old. So she reads chapter one. And then the next morning at the breakfast table, while I'm sitting there eating my cereal, she goes, I read this great book. I think you'll really like it. And she tells me a synopsis of chapter one in like one or two minutes. 
And okay. I grew up, I grew up uh, when I was three or four, I got diagnosed with growth hormone deficiency. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm six one now. So Ooh. obviously the medication worked. <laughs> <Yeah>. But um, <laughs> for those that don't know, growth hormone deficiency can cause some pretty serious health problems. And my condition was so bad that um, had I not gotten the treatment, I probably would have been about five, two with some very disproportionate parts of my body, wow. number of health complications. So yeah, I was fortunate enough that, uh, that I, I got that sorted out. However, yeah. growing up with growth hormone deficiency and getting the treatment meant that I was very short as a kid. So when I, I heard <laughs> that the hero of this story is three and a half feet tall, mm. I'm like, okay, <laughs> say less tell right. me more um and and the next day she read or that same evening she read chapter two as she was going to bed next morning out at the breakfast table she tells me the synopsis of chapter two and it keeps going and going and going and going for i mean i think she skipped all of like the boring politics stuff and like sure council of elrond and tom bombadil and all of that sure <laughs> stuff that didn't wouldn't entertain an eight-year-old but you know all of a sudden there are these four people that remind me of myself and there's this aragorn who is this tall kingly yeah. person and there's this you know uh legolas this elf and all of these people that i i grew to to care about without ever really meeting them and then i i got through the whole book that way pretty much on a day-by-day -day basis for a couple of weeks wow. and then my mom says hey by the way there's a movie coming out and so uh, a couple of weeks later she gets the fellowship of the ring dvds which i think she knew that they were already out and just didn't tell me sure at that point, but gotta build the suspense exactly exactly respect so man. and i remember this uh very distinctly um we watched the first half up until very well, you shall be the fellowship of the ring. Right. Yeah. Where are we going? Yeah. And <laughs> she goes, um, okay, uh, listen, we, we got to pause here because we need to go pick up your sister from dance class. We'll watch the rest tomorrow. And I went, no, <laughs> but I wasn't allowed to watch it alone. Cause I, I don't think I was even 11 at that point. So, uh, wow. it was, yeah, so I got my I got my start in Lord of the Rings in a very different way. So naturally, as soon as I was old enough, I went back and I read The Hobbit sure. and I loved Bilbo and I thought Thorin was cool and Bard, even though he shows up for a little bit. He's like, ooh, archery. That's what Legolas does. Sure. And you know, my mom got me my first bow and arrow set, and I would swing cool. a a big stick around in the backyard pretending I was Aragorn or later on Aragon. Yeah, of course. Everybody, every <laughs> yeah, of course. What what child with a backyard growing up in the nineties and Facts. early two thousands didn't do that? Facts. Um, yeah. So then I saw the movies. I was lucky enough to see Return of the King in theaters. Ooh, um, cool. oh, it was amazing. And then um and then wound up reading the books later on. And then in college I read uh The Silmarillion for oh. the first time. Took me about three or four months to get through that. I, I was gonna ask it's a lot. Ooh. It's a lot. I've but, made attempts. And, <laughs> I uh, thank thank God for your Sundays. Oh, I, I was literally just about to <laughs> to shamelessly promote my own stuff. Let's do uh, it. Let's yeah. do it. I, so so right when I was starting this uh, whole, uh, huh, I'm gonna b use big air quotes for people listening. Micro influencer thing. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I was like, you know what people want? They want the Silmarillion to make sense. I cannot Next. tell you the number of people that have been like. It doesn't make any sense, but I want to learn more. It's like, well, I know what the heck's going on. Heck, I've read the book, humble brag, like 15, 20 times. Dude, um, I say it. read. Well, I used to listen to the audiobooks to fall asleep. Sure. And I would just remember, you know, I would listen to the tale of Baron and Luthien and, you know, of Finn Gulfin and his battle with Sauron's master Morgoth. And it's sure. just like, eventually it all just started clicking. And I was like, oh, I understand what's going on here. Yeah, that's fine. It took me like literally almost a decade so like don't use me as a <laughs> sure. as like a shining example of understanding it immediately like take your time with it enjoy it but yeah. um but yeah i i every sunday i would get on my twitch channel for the same uh 30 or 40 people read mm -hmm. the silmarillion pause every 15 20 minutes um and i did that for like almost god it was it's 25 episodes and I did once. So it probably took me a good five or six months to get yeah. through it. 
And uh, yeah, they're all available for free on YouTube. And then there's a podcast version on Anchor because I, I, the, the legality of me providing commentary for a, a book is questionable. And, sure. You know, fair use only goes so far. I've been fortunate <laughs> enough to sort of fly under the radar. But as I continue to advertise it, I'm like, mm, careful, careful. It's okay. No but, one listens yeah. to this. Oh, stop <laughs> it. You got you to gotta advertise, promote yourself, believe in yourself. No, or this is just for me at, and you. Oh, well, that... <laughs> is a completely different kind of podcast. Right? Than like, I'm, allow me to refresh my drinks, sir. Indeed, indeed. Take your <laughs> shoes off. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've been wearing fussy socks for the last half hour. Are you kidding? My man, oh. my man. <laughs> that's, what, that's so special, though, that like, who yeah. else can say that, that you got your introduction to something you love so much over breakfast with your mom? I'm the only person that has ever told a story like that, that I can think of. So many people are like, oh yeah, I watched the animated movies because they're 40 or 50 years old. It's like, right. no, you started with the movies or I started with the books. And I just like, I, I am the odd one out. I'm like, I have no memory of like sitting down for the first time and cracking open, you know, in a hole in the ground. Like I don't remember right. that moment, but I remember the breakfast table. And that to oh. me is like a familial memory that I, yeah. I can't ever forget. Um, I, I will say spoilers for the return of the king. I, I assume most of <laughs> sure. your audience has either read the Lord of the Rings. Um, my jaw dropped when my mom said that Gollum fell into the lava. Oh yeah. I I was so <laughs> hoping that Gollum, this little gangly, you know, because I grew up with like, I don't know neopets and nineties cartoons where like uh -huh. the scraggly, skinny, scrawny, you know. Sure. gross thing turned into the lovable companion after a while yeah right? um and Gollum didn't didn't do that and no. that was one of the, the that was probably one of my first like core adult memories of being like oh I guess sometimes the nice person that was trying their best doesn't succeed and you know <laughs> I look I look back on that and I have I'm, I've been fortunate enough to um uh, to be friends with some incredible people who in their life have suffered from addiction sure. and uh, have recovered. Um, but I mean, obviously you're always in recovery as any yep. recovering addict will tell you. Mm. Um, but, but they, they have gotten to the point where they look at Gollum and Frodo and the parallel between the two. And it's like, Ooh. this is a metaphor for addiction. Yeah. And I think that's, that's the, that's the beauty of Tolkien. I'm going to go on another tangent if you don't Let's mind. Let's dance. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's go. So the addiction side is one thing, but I have always been fascinated by how many different aspects of Tolkien's books there are in a modern context, uh, even yeah. though it was written all those years ago, because like the addiction side and the parallel between Gollum and Frodo, or how much the queer community has latched onto the Frodo Sam relationship or the Legolas sure. Gimli relationship, or if you're, <laughs> if you're a, uh, if you're a, Tumblr user in the mid 2010s, <laughs> like myself. Yeah. Uh, Baggins Shield. Are you familiar with Baggins Shield? I know what those mean. <laughs> they, uh, Baggins Shield is a ship uh, that I believe originated on Tumblr and fan fiction websites Makes where sense. it's an alternate universe where Thorin survives and Thorin realizes Ooh. that Bilbo's a good person and Bilbo realizes that Thorin's a good person and Thorin rules the Lonely Mountain for a while, but then realizes that he needs a life of peace. And so he and Bilbo move into the Shire together and they oh, adopt cool. Frodo as their, you know, uh, as their, as their adoptive son. And there's this such, there's a, such a wholesome side of gay Hobbit Twitter where sure. the Thorin Bilbo, uh, uh, side of things has just come up so wonderfully and it's yeah. one of those aspects that I was like I'm sure Tolkien never had any idea that, right. that was going to happen <laughs> but what a cool thing to come out of it and like there's so many different sides to to the community that that have latched on to uh not the least of which is the new Amazon TV show that has yeah. you know finally getting mm -hmm. some BIPOC representation I yeah I I'm pumped I, yeah. me too me too. Yeah. I I think uh, I've I've had quite the experience. I don't know if you've been following my journey on TikTok. I have. Over the, I have. So you so you know I got banned because of some mass reporting. Craziness. I, absolute Craziness. insanity. Uh, let's just say I've I've made some very racist people very angry, and I'm very Good. proud of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a badge of honor. There. As you should. As, yeah. as you should. Yeah. <laughs> if I've if I've gone out of my way to make the racists feel uncomfortable and check themselves. Yeah, I've done my job, but at the, at the at the same time, right? Like, um, there's a lot of big air quotes here, listeners. Mm -hmm. 
drama happening on TikTok <laughs> yeah. right now. I'm yeah. not going to mention names, but I'm, you might be yeah. familiar with yeah. Okay, cool. It's hard we're, to get away from it. Yeah. yeah. We're on the same page here. Um, yep. I have always thought that, you know, as much as I want to call out the, the racists, I also always want to make sure that when people see my videos, they don't go, oh, is he just going to call out racists again? I want to have sure. that balance between like the social responsibility I mm-hmm. feel personally to be that, you know, sure setting of an example. And then the other side of it, which is sometimes people just want a nice video to watch for a minute to sure. get that little hit of dopamine and keep on scrolling. And right. <laughs> I try and look for that balance there. I'm right here. <laughs> Thank you. It's a compu- you. it's a compulsion at this point when you last <laughs> name. I can't help it. <laughs> uh, there are I don't know if, if you've ever done this because because I've done this personally and I've I've been fortunate enough to have people tell me in the comments that they've done this. It's like, oh my God, you haven't showed up on my for you page in like a week. I'm gonna click on your profile and go through every single video you've made over the last yep. and I, I I do that for so many accounts. It's just like yep. ooh, time to binge. All it's the time. Great. All yeah. the time. It's That's great. great. That's why it's nice having a catalog. How many videos have I've- you made? Oh, you, God, know? you know what? It's so funny. I, I used to subscribe to this uh, data collection service that would tell me, I think when I, when I, well, when I ended my subscription about seven or eight months ago, I was at about 360. <gasps> so I, I had made, I, I had, I have tried to consistently post one TikTok a day. Cause when I, I don't know if you know my origin story, but I posted six videos Thanksgiving mm-hmm. evening of 2020 and woke yep. up to 10,000 followers. Right and that so. was, yeah, I, thank you. But I, <laughs> it was a weird night. Sure. Um, <laughs> but I, I started furiously searching. All right. What is the TikTok algorithm? How do I succeed? Because ah, as, as anybody with a, with man. a mic, yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> as anybody with a, with a microphone and uh, that grew up in the early two thousands will tell you, everybody has been preparing to be famous their entire life. <laughs> if you look me in the eye and tell me you didn't think about going on Steve Colbert or Dave Letterman or the Graham Norton show. Dude, I've got my just... Oscar speech already written. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody's thought about it. Yep. So when I woke up that day, I'm like, oh, this is it. Okay. <laughs> Here so we go. <laughs> how do I break the algorithm? How do I beat it? And everyone was like, you post three times a day. You use this hashtag combined with this one and this trending sure. <laughs> sound. And after, after like three or four days of doing this, I'm like, I've posted 12 videos in like three or four days. I'm exhausted. I'm burnt <laughs> out. I'm still gaining followers, but I've eaten nothing but pizza and yep. uh, angry orchards for the last three days. It's <laughs> you start terrible. looking like Gollum. Yeah, ex- exactly. <laughs> exactly. I get it. So you, you just, you kind of have to take a moment. At least I did. I took that moment and I looked at myself and I went, what the actual F am I doing right now? Cause like, sure. obviously I want this. Every, right. I, I don't want to say everybody. Right. Sure not everybody, but obviously people that want it are going to capitalize on it. Sure. But I, I took it to such an extreme that it was like, oh, this is hazardous to my mental and physical health. I need to mm-hmm. calm down. And so I kind of realized it's like, if I post one obscure Lord of the Rings fact a day, we'll see what happens. Yeah. And it just never really stopped. It happened. That's what It happened. does. <laughs> it does. And then of course there are days, uh, something is wonderful is happening to a buddy of mine uh annex wilson he goes by fantasy annex amazing Um, he does lord of the rings content and wheel of time and brandon sanderson and all the all the great fantasy yeah uh, stories he has gained something like forty five thousand followers in the last (gasps) three days good for him Uh, he his videos have just exploded i'm so happy for him i also know um that there will come a day when that flood turns into a trickle Right. Because the same thing happened to me about six or seven months ago. I, I woke up to look at my analytics. Oh, 27,000 followers in a single day. What the <laughs> frack happened? <laughs> yeah. and like, I have no explanation for it. I sure. posted a normal video. I didn't do anything different than what I've been normally doing. But you yeah. know, that little bit of dopamine is just enough to kind of keep you going over and over again. And it's now gotten to the point where I'm like, I need to expand what I'm doing, right? Because I love Lord of the Rings, but like I have yeah. other interests, which is why sure. it's so great talking to you about like police chases and yeah. how many dead bodies have I seen? And that's right. And we, we didn't actually get to that question. Don't worry, yeah. we will. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. This is the benefit of not coming in with questions. I'm like, oh, 
You think you're just going to glide over that? I don't think so. No, not in my no. house. <laughs> Wait till you realize the dead body comment was intentional. And I wanted yeah. you to ask me again Ugh. off air. I'll tell you what kind of neighborhood I grew up in. I probably saw uh, people like you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I'm like 12 on the news. So he's got his girlfriend hostage. We think I don't know. He's been out there for like 12 hours. We don't know. <laughs> oh, God. Wait, how many hostage situations happened in your neighborhood? Because I've covered so several of them. Ju- so just the one where my okay. brother and I ended up on the news. There were uh, other ones, but we okay. weren't involved. Oh, you yeah. Know? No, I don't no, know I what you. reporter put a mic in front of a 12 year old and was like, so what's going on? And we're oh, like, oh, no, that, well, that's <laughs> that- <laughs> Doesn't every 12 year old start their own sentences with, well, you yeah. see, yeah. we were so we we had been preparing for that moment. Like just you know, all we need is one guy to take his girlfriend hostage within a half a mile of right here. We are on it. <laughs> Little did you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That's that's I mean, obviously not the taking hostage part is funny, but like it is right. so funny to think about like the the things that we prepare ourselves for as as yeah. kids it's like i want to be famous and then you finally get that moment and you're like oh oh i didn't expect it to be like this at all sure <laughs> i have regrets <laughs> right yeah i find that's life though it's never the way you expect it no literally every single adult teacher that i have ever had um that i have ever asked it's like what did you want to be when you grew up right Every single one of them told me, it's like, look, I never expected to be where I ended up. So like, honestly, Bilbo Baggins was kind of a hero of mine because he was just like, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm going on an adventure. So let's see what happens. It's the way to go. That's how to live life. You never know where it's going to take you. Sometimes it's to a mountain with a giant dragon. Other times it's to an app on your phone that you spend multiple hours a day obsessing over. That's right. In both of those, you might end up with a cool shirt. You never know. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> almost got a spin take. Merch. I, <laughs> I got so close i got um, so close <laughs> I've, I've got enough of a drink left that i i feel you know in perfect, the next perfect. 28 minutes all we right, can make all right, I got all you. right challenge all right. accepted all right because... all right here we go i feel like <laughs> i've done most of the talking though so it feels slightly because you're the guest this is how mm. it works don you know what you want to talk about you want to see some really cool movements you ready for i'm this? ready i'm ready go ahead segway pop up 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 you have the best shirts <laughs> ever made <laughs> In Lord of the Rings, do you mean my sh- <laughs> do you mean my shirts, which are available at Don Marshall seventy two merch dot Those are the ones reasonable I mean. prizes. Would you like to describe a few of them? Because um, I sure do. <laughs> I I'm sure I know which ones you're talking about, but why don't we start at the very beginning? A very good place to start, according yes. to Julie Andrews. Indeed. Um. So Yeet Seal Tour. There um, it is. I do, I do have to give a very special shout out, as I do almost every time, uh, mm-hmm. to someone who goes by uh, Pudding Online, who Great. was the very, the very first person to suggest the idea of yeeting Isildur. And I remember very distinctly, <laughs> I was on my lunch break at the drive through of a Wendy's, and I had just pulled into the parking uh, spot because I didn't want to eat my lunch at work. Respect. Um, so I went live on TikTok. This is after I had like 15,000 followers. I'm like, ooh, people to give me attention while I sure. need some. <laughs> the button's and there so, for a reason, Don. Yeah. And so I uh, I made a live chat and I was like, hey, what's going on? And somebody asked, what would happen if Elrond just, you know, chucked Isildur in? And <laughs> this guy named Pudding goes, yeah, ye- Isildur. And I thought, huh, that was really funny. And so I uh, ended my lunch break filmed the video that I'm sure you're now aware of, mm-hmm, of, mm-hmm. you know, what would have happened if he did Yee Sealed or, and why didn't he? Well, just in case your listeners are curious, um, they're literally related, even though they're thousands of generations removed. Mm-hmm. Um, and most of their friends just died in front of them. So they're not feeling particularly murdery anymore. Fair. Um, so um, there was this moment where I was like, yeah, we do not yeet our friends into lava when they make one bad decision. <laughs> And so it, at that point, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. 15,000 views. And the video goes viral and it's got 50,000. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh God, no. Here we go. Okay, okay. So I put a comment in there and this was before comments were pinned. So I was like right. desperate that people would even see it at that point because it had already you know, done well, done the numbers. Uh-huh. And I was like, if I put Yeet Isildur on a t-shirt, would you all buy it? And immediately <laughs> hundreds of comments responding to it. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. Take my money. Yes. Yeah. And so I had the bright idea to um, decide, oh, that's a funny phrase. 
but you know what's even funnier? And so I reached out to uh, a now good buddy of mine uh, who goes by Tanguar Teacher on TikTok, cool. who literally, I, I cannot thank him enough for all of this um, because he was the one that translated yeet uh, <laughs> verbatim. <laughs> and Isil, Yeah, and Isildur into Elvish. And um, by the way, Tanguar Teacher, if you don't already follow him and you want to learn the Elvish language, amazing resource. So cool. Great guy. So I took yeet Isildur put it in Elvish, put it on a t-shirt and got close to 400,000 views in 24 hours. And it, yeah. And, and like, I don't say those numbers to brag. I say those numbers to put it in perspective of where I was at the time, Sure, where my followers were in the tens of thousands. Mm -hmm. So comparatively speaking, right? Like if a video of mine does 500,000 views, I'm like, cool. All of my followers saw it and then some. Right. But for, for, uh, for something like that to happen, to have several thousand times, several hundred times the number of views I yeah. typically would. There is there is no amount of, you know, serotonin sure. buy <laughs> or or buzz that could possibly replace it. It is one of those. I've never um, experienced anything quite like it. Because sure. I woke up and I'm like, hmm, t-shirt. Oh, that's a lot of views. That's a lot of comments. Sure. Oh my God. So that's, <laughs> what are your notifications so, like at that point? I no joke. From that day forward, I have been at ninety nine plus pretty much every day. Oh, yeah. It good is. God. Yeah. I thankfully I can sort them by comment and by tag, which is honestly really only what I filter through anymore. Sure. Because when I mean, I'll I'll wake up to there. Oh God. There were there are days when drama happens. And sure. They're like, oh no. I have 54 new mentions. What happened? Right. What did they say? <laughs> and like, usually it's just something harmless. Like, oh, this artist had a really good job. I'm like, this is so great. And I'll duet some of them and they're really good and it's phenomenal. Sure. And then there will be times where it's like, this person had a bad opinion about the Lord <laughs> of the Rings. Put them in their place. I'm like, no, no. Like, like go away. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't want to deal with you. Go away, nerd Roddick. Sorry. Right. I, <laughs> yeah, the, the YouTube channel. They're yeah. very they're let's That's just say you. they use the yeah, they use the term woke uh unironically to insult mm. people and it just I'm so done with all of the negativity, man. I'm I'm almost Same. 30. I don't have we're adults here. I'm just gonna enjoy the things I like. If you want to complain about pop culture things that you want to complain about, it's your business. I'm not dealing yeah. with it. I'm not See? dealing with it. Another reason I'm glad I sent you the invite. We're exactly that, the same. There you go. There you <laughs> Dude, go. Just if you don't like something, all right, move on. Yeah. What's, something, what's something you like? Let's talk about that. Yeah. yeah. It is pretty cool that somebody liked Ye Isildur so much. They got a tattooed? Oh. I've, Dude, listen, you, and, you inspired a tattoo. I've inspired four tattoos. <gasps> I didn't do at all of them <laughs> because at a certain point I'm like, okay, um, this feels very weird, but there are there have been four people. That Dude. I have seen get the Yeet Isildur tattoo. And it is one of those moments where I look internally at myself and go, oh, this is what it means to be an influencer. I have quite right. literally influenced someone <laughs> by to definition put permanent, well, semi permanent ink on their bodies. And the tattoos look amazing. And I'm yeah. like, this is so good. I'm honored, but also like, Oh, that's a lot of pressure on me to like, <laughs> right. what happens if I say something funny and I don't sure. think it's that funny, but everybody else does. And it becomes like, like, um, who was it? Uh, um, obsessive girl, the obsessive girlfriend meme. Mm -hmm. Oh Lana, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Who like, I mean, she is wonderful. She's raised so much money for charity through her meme presence alone. Sure. But like that took off so far beyond what she could, uh, could even fathom and at, at, to a certain extent this has as well like yeah yeah someone someone got the the toss me um in dwarfish tattoo did which they is, yeah oh, they tagged me in it a couple a of one. weeks ago which, which for those listening that are maybe not sure here's another shameless promotion i Let's made a it. shirt that i translated into dwarfish that says toss me um <laughs> like gimli one of one of my funnier ones um certainly. i love it i love Thank it you. And it, the, and it's one of those things where like when you make especially in fandom right when you have these obscure references it's like a secret code of oh, yeah. people that get it yeah like, so I have this here mm. and so that is a white lotus tile and for anyone that is into Avatar the Last Airbender or Iroh, oh my god nobody knows what this is unless you know what it is 
That's right. And so I'm so into those things. Like yeet is sealed or so specific <laughs> that like, if you know, you know. Niche media. It. Niche media is where it's at these days. That's right. It's that gotta con- lean into it. That connection. Which is so great because I've I've met with people like from TikTok and they're like, yeah, you know, you you obviously you post a lot about Lord of the Rings, but like, have you considered posting about other things you like? I'm like, not really. <laughs> sure. And like, I think at a certain point, I'll, I'll get I'll get to that point where I'm like, hey, by the way, I also really like the Halo uh, video sure. games. And did you know there are 31 Halo books right now? What? Yeah. Halo not. has a lore that is arguably more extensive than Tolkien's. Like what goes back a hundred thousand? Here, do do you have five minutes for me yeah, to drop some knowledge on you? Let's do it. So I don't I don't know how many. I mean, obviously you've got the Star Wars stuff, so I hope some of your listeners are science fiction fans. <laughs> the Halo games are not the tip of the iceberg. They're like the first molecule of water compared oh. to the the expanded lore, the forerunners that existed ten a hundred thousand years before. Like literally, this ancient group of aliens that like fought the flood the little like, you know the little yeah, yeah, yeah. alien things that you fight in the video game it's like oh that's really creepy because it's 2001 and you're playing a game no 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 the flood are terrifying because oh. the flood are just a uh corrupted version of the literal gods of the halo universe called the primordials who created what? the universe out of the ethereal soup like dude it goes so deep. that's so cool it goes so deep like i i am so seriously considering like hi welcome to obscure halo facts Dude, i'm not gonna shut up about i've seriously thought about it do it i'm an enabler I... through and through <laughs> <laughs> and just so i'm I'm currently nine books into the 31 book halo uh wow. series and it has been one of those things where like i listen to the audiobook probably for like an hour every day sure and just every day something weird blows my mind like did you know master chief can run 40 kilometers an hour <laughs> Oh, yeah, what? he can. Yeah. In the books, their top speed is roughly 40 kilometers an hour. That's insane. Yeah, that's oh. nuts. And I, I look back at that and I'm like, oh, this is so much cooler than like, yeah. <laughs> all of the other stuff that I was currently interested in. Better hyper fixate on that for a year and a half until it yeah. no longer interests me. That's right. Yeah. Dude, follow that passion. Exactly. So many people live just lives of existing. It's like, no, no. Yeah. If you like something, you drown yeah. it. You, you is, go until there's nothing left. Which is why I find my obsession with Lord of the Rings so weird because it's been almost 20 years and the dopamine hasn't run out yet. And it's I don't like, think it will. I, I don't think it I will. I really either. don't. Now that I know like more about myself and my own neurodivergency, I'm like, this should have ended at least 15 right. years ago. What <laughs> yeah. is happening? I'm the, I'm the same way. I'm the same hmm. way. It's, what's it, your What's your obsession? It's Star Wars and Lord of the Rings because oh, they came solid. out around the same time. So like mm-hmm. I had episode one came out in 99. I was obsessed mm-hmm, with it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, then Fellowship was mm-hmm. in 01. Mm-hmm. And then 02 was Attack of the Clones. And then Two Towers and Return of the King came out in between two and three. That's right. They it was did. the oh perfect held me over. My brother and I, we were like, he was Legolas. I was Aragorn. We cut down every plant anyone ever, like we yes. were terrors. Yes. And we had actual swords. And we're like, those are orcs. And we just cut down every plant someone like put in their gardens. Like, it was awful. <gasps> That's but amazing. To this day, same. Like, dude, I've. I've seen those movies so many times. Of course. Of They'll course. cry every single time. Exact mm. same amount. So I've I've always, as a journalist, I, I I pride myself on being able to read people. So I'm gonna do a quick gut okay. check here. Let's do it. All right. So mm-hmm. judging by your background, you've clearly got a setup wherever you live. And personally, I can't tell if it's your own apartment with a significant other. Or it is a family home. No judgment, by the way. No, 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 Pandemic no, I like ruined this. all of us. I like okay. This. Uh-huh. So my bet is about six or seven years ago, call it like 2014, 2015, let's say 2014 to 2016. Okay. Okay. You started really identifying with Luke Skywalker being stuck on a sand planet and desperately trying to get out of whatever current situation you were in. I like it. I like okay. it. Not true, but I do. Like oh, it. <laughs> dang it. I was so close. Not, you were. Not really. you oh, was so, I? All right. So I, so my guy's Qui-Gon. 
That's, oh, like, okay. That's that's my dude. Like I can 100% attribute who I am as a man today to Qui-Gon Jinn and Aragorn. Tell me, okay, I get the Aragorn part because right. I see the beard. It's glorious, right. by right. the way. Tell thank me more you, about the Qui-Gon because that's myself. such a... So, uh, okay, mm. so we have, this okay. says focus. As in He's pointing to a tattoo, by the way. I am indeed. <laughs> so, uh, your focus determines your reality, which is a quote that I have lived by since I was like eight. Is the that Arabesh? Is that it the is. Arabesh? It is. Respect. Yeah. Good okay. eye. Good eye. Right. Of course I'm you did. Literally surrounded by like Qui-Gon stuff everywhere. It's like that's awesome. My guy. So yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I so wouldn't have pitted you for a Qui-Gon, but again, I don't think dude. I'd pit anybody for a Qui-Gon person. He has <laughs> so little my thing. screen time comparatively. I'm, genuinely been obsessed since eight years old i was like that is that is my guy right there that's who i want to be when i grew up decisions i make here on i'm like what would qui-gon do okay i'm, I'm gonna do that and then when aragorn showed up it was the same uh have you read the qui-gon books from the new disney canon i have Good. i have i They're actually have books. you want to talk about some crazy conspiracies buckle up don put your I'm hat ready. on okay uh, okay i don't have a hat okay. but i've got this so, piece of paper mind you i told you I've been obsessed with Qui-Gon since I was eight. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. This okay. is going to get weird. We're doing this. Uh, Never I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. So this is a comic that came out a few years ago. Yes. The Qui-Gon Jinn Age of Republic. I'm, Indeed. I'm familiar. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh, okay. Uh -huh. Here we go. Here we go. Uh -huh. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, He's yeah. opening it. I'm He's opening, opening it, it folks. That is the sound effect. We're here. doing this. We're mm -hmm. doing this. This is for us. Okay. I also used to work in radio, so I feel the need to describe yeah. everything <laughs> that's going on right now. <laughs> so... The title of this comic is Balance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's my last name. Oh, <gasps> uh -huh. uh -huh. Oh my God. Oh, it gets deeper. Oh. Just, just when you think that was like, okay, that's pretty cool. That's that a is. pretty cool coincidence. Uh -huh. The planet that he's on is not going to be in focus, but it is spelled B-R-I apostrophe N. Yeah. Oh. I know. I don't oh. know what to do with that. I've been sitting with it for years. And I was like, uh. so I reached out to Jody Hauser, who wrote it, and I was like, hey, quick question. Um, <laughs> just out of curiosity, uh, what's uh what's the planet's what's the planet's name here? And she's like, Oh, it's Brian. I was like, okay, cool, 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 cool. cool. Yeah. Um might I ask, where did the, the inspiration come from? She's like, I don't know, it just kind of came to me. Um, my dad's name is Brian, maybe that's where it is. I was like, hmm. All right. Mm. I see Allow me to reintroduce myself. My yes. name is Brian Ballant. Exactly. Wow. Isn't that wild? Wow. That's incredible. You just walked into something, Don. <laughs> I, I feel honored to have unlocked that new yeah. part of your brain. I've just been sitting here with it for the right wow. guest. I Is that nuts? <laughs> you hang on. You had Ahmed Best on this podcast and you I didn't did. figure that out with him? I know, right? I, know, mm. I mean, I was talking to Ahmed. Like, I, 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 yeah, I, yeah, fair, like, fair. My fair. guy. <laughs> listen, listen. I am but a humble micro influencer on TikTok. Indeed, he is literally Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, yeah. He is literally the Ahmed best. All right, yes. it's a different Spe league. Speaking of which, yes. Did you ever get anything out of him about Darth Jar Jar? I did. I did. He's down with it. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, he's down. Okay. Good. Good. Yep. Good. Good. He loves it. Because because that that means like you know the marvel what if series uh-huh uh-huh there is a there is a universe where i'm i'm this is going to be another shameless self-promotion i'm obsessed Go. with the what if ideas for sure. old franchises because you know at this point the lord of the rings has been run into the ground from every angle <laughs> sure so star wars <laughs> right right you right know, as long as there's not new content we're just sure. like give me more content yeah. <laughs> i'm squeezing this really dry rock trying to play sure. and it doesn't work right i know it's in there um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or no, that was the wrong metaphor. It's blood from a stone and water from a... Anyway, regardless. It's all of it. The, the point <laughs> is, I'm obsessed with the What If series. Sure. And it occurs to me that like the What If scenarios for Star Wars are infinitely possible. Yeah. And one yeah. of the things that, that I am doing is uh, I start... The question I get the most is, what if they took the eagles to Mordor? Oh, I know. Oh, good. Oh, okay, good. yes. Good, good, good. Tell uh, me, tell me. So, so again, shameless self promotion here, but I got to do what I can do. Yeah. March, March twenty fifth is episode one of a new. Um, it's like a TTRPG, similar to like Critical Role, yep. um, Dimension Twenty, The Adventure Zone. Any of the Dungeons and Dragons folks will relate. But Love like, it. if you've ever wanted to see what would happen as 
the eagles take the fellowship to mordor Mm -hmm. um the answer is that the eagle gets tempted by the ring kills the entire fellowship and (laughs) rules middle earth as their bird overlord i cannot (laughs) tell you though how many people are like oh i'm gonna welcome this bird overlord he seems nice (laughs) Mm -hmm. the thing about fascism is right (laughs) yeah yeah you would not be his favorite subject i promise no no as as a matter of fact i say this is a bit of a spoiler, but not really. Uh, when Guaihir gets the ring, the one of the first things he says out loud is, the time of the beast has come. As like Ooh. a way to just say like, hey, everybody that walks on two legs, you're no longer welcome in my sure. planet. Oh, I love it. I love it. And a little uh, little reference I see as well. I mean, I'm picking gotta, up what you're laying down. You got to you got to let's just say I have three players and they're all wonderful. Um, I don't this they are they have done their best to work in as many Lord of the Rings line quotes. Great. One of one of my players, Max, literally a couple of days ago when we were filming session four, just went, if I take one more step, it'll be the furthest from home I've ever been. <laughs> and I, I have this running joke where it's like, oh, you wanna you wanna poke fun at this thing we're taking very seriously? In sure. Air quotes. I'm adding six HP to the final boss. And yeah. so I just say that every time <laughs> they make me angry. Um, uh, Max, by the way, is uh, Max Randolph Studios. Uh, mm-hmm. Most people know him as, oh, the Valhalla Doors guy. Yeah. He's and so cool. he, yeah, uh, he, I mean, just like he's playing a dwarf. Of course uh, he is. Artificer who is, be, you know, Perfect. we translated it to Lord of the Rings. It's like, oh, he's just a dwarf smelter, crafter, forger. Sure. And the the amount of detail he goes into for in-game crafting. Yeah. Like he's drawing me out schematics and the gear works. And it's like, yeah, I want to use, I want to utilize the the momentum of the hammer on the downswing because you got to choke up at the top when you raise it so that you get all the and it's just like listening to yes. listening to experts in their field is one of my favorite things to do. Same. Like TED Talks, phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um and there is something so special about watching a person who is a real life Lord of the Rings dwarf yeah. outside of the fantasy world. It's such a privilege. That's so cool. Yeah. How how yeah. big is your? I know at one point you showed like a scroll, but it was like over ninety pages. I have ninety five pages of notes, and that's for oh. the initial campaign. I take notes as the campaign continues, so sure. I am approaching one hundred and three right now. That's incredible. And I, I have to talk with uh, with my sponsors and be like, hey, can I release this as like, <laughs> it'll utilize your system, but it won't be your system. Yeah. It's just like, a, you know, there are more guidelines than actual rules and like Pirates sure. of the Caribbean. So we of just kind of, course. Kinda, yeah. Yeah. And you just kind of be like, hey, a bunch of people want to play this. And I, d- I'm already, we're already sponsored. Right? Sure. So I don't need Congrats. to try and make more money. Thank you. Uh, we don't need to try and make more money off of it. Might as well encourage people to buy your game and, you know, download the PDF for free. But that's a that's a long ways away as we continue. It's to... still really cool. Like I said, I, I love passion and like clearly your heart's in it. And that makes me even more interested than I already was at face value. I think it's so cool. I can't Thank wait. You. Thank you. I, now that you're so entrenched in like Lord of the Rings lore and stuff, and now you have a bird overlord. Mm-hmm. Can you do you have a favorite character? Okay, so I say this having literally just met Sean Astin three or four days ago. Right, I saw he that. was my favorite character. Thank you. He was my favorite character before then. Uh huh. I have always identified with Sam. The best. Um, I do remember though sticking up for Frodo in a huge way because one of my classmates. I think it was in like fifth grade. He's like, yeah, I saw the two towers. Frodo is so whiny, just complaining about the ring. I'm like, you listen here, you little cretin. This person is literally carrying the weight of the world around their neck. How do you not understand that? And I'm like, you know, as you a full tenor. Sam. I did. I, I did love it. full Sam. And I, I looked back, I look back at that core memory and I'm like, oh, I took that way too seriously as a preteen adolescent <laughs> than I should have. Right that explains a lot about my childhood. <laughs> right. And there's something to be said about uh, the, the level of passion you feel as a kid versus what you feel as an adult. And if it's, if it's roughly the same going on 15, 20 years, um, it's, it's way more than, than a hyper fixation. It's a part yeah. of you. Yeah. 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 So I get them tattooed on me. 
I yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I am terrified of needles, but I have I have a tattoo in mind. I have another another Elvish translator friend of mine Ooh. who goes by Wizard Way Chris. Um, so one of my other hyper fixations for ages, because it physically broke me as a teenager, was the Philip Pullman trilogy, His Dark Materials, oh, yeah. which is the Golden Compass, uh, mm-hmm. Subtle Knife and Amber Spyglass. Um, still haven't watched season two of the TV show. I'm such a bad fan. But like, <laughs> You're a little he, busy. Yeah, I, I am. But also at the same time, like, I, I'm i not ready to be broken again. And I know that as soon as I watch season two, I'm immediately going to want to watch season three, mm. while simultaneously not going to want to watch season three for anyone that hasn't read the books. I get a, it. About, you know, a coming of age story that also involves metaphorically and literally killing God and freeing the souls of the dead. And there's a whole like, Book one is very it's different bonkers. than book two. It is bonkers. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think I realized how bonkers it was until much later on in life. Cause the, you know, the series fought backstory for people sure. who haven't read it follows a girl named Lyra who goes on an adventure and that adventure winds up not going according to plan because it winds up, you know, ending very tragically. And that's the end of book one. And I'm like, Oh, that's not how books are supposed to end. What do you mean there's a second one? And what do you mean that that second one involves like metaphysics and John Milton and Paradise Lost? Right. I'm 13 years old. What the right. frack do I know about that? Right. And so that that is one of those series that I go back to every once in a while and I learn something new every time because it's one of those series that you're like, oh, this this was marketed to kids. But this is for like 60 year old white British men. This right. is not for. <laughs> right. I don't know how I got to be the target audience for that one. Sure. I don't know what Warner Brothers was thinking when they made the movie. Or wait, was it New Line Cinema? It doesn't matter. There was a sure. movie in like 2005 or six. It was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Although, here's another fun fact uh-huh. um, that series means so much to me. This is another core memory. I had already read the books and the movie was coming out. And it was Nicole Kidman, Daniel Craig, Dakota mm-hmm. Blue Richards. And I was like, oh, cool, I'm going to go see it. And my school, which at the time was still is a uh, private Catholic grade school, in case that wasn't obvious sure. about, you know, everything about me, <laughs> former gifted kid, burnout, ADHD, you know, everything about me. I feel you. <laughs> thank you. You're amongst friends. They <laughs> Thank you. They sent a note home and they're like, hey, listen, there's been some controversy about this new movie. Mm-hmm. Here's the school's thoughts. And the school was run by nuns. And so I'm <laughs> sitting, I'm sitting there at the dinner table trying to explain to my parents. It's like, yes, it's about killing God, but you have to understand where this author is coming from. And, you know, imagine a 13 year old explaining atheism to very Catholic parents <laughs> who very much want their child to be raised, you know, with a sense of morals. And, you know, sure. they didn't, they by no means force religion on me, but I grew up in and around it. But like, sure. I read these books and I was like, oh, God's dead. And it was a teenager that killed him. I'm going to, that's a spoiler, by the way, but like, sure. it's, it's such a, <laughs> it, they, they glance, they, they pass over it in the series. Sorry, I've gone completely off the rails here. I'm but in. Like, I'm so in right now. Good. This is <laughs> this is what I live. This this is one of those moments where I realize, like, I don't want to be just the obscure Lord of the Rings facts guy. I'm the right? obscure His Dark Materials. I'm the obscure yeah. Halo. I'm the not obscure Star Wars. I don't have the chops for that. I got you. Uh, there you go. There you go. We'll team you, up you, and make our own fellowship, Don. There we you go. It. There we you go. This. Yeah. <laughs> Between you, me, Straw Hat, Goofy, we're unstoppable. That's it's, right. Yeah. And so like, I just, I remember looking back at this, this book series that I loved so much that absolutely broke me because it is this tragic love story. I look back and I'm like, this book is not about killing God. Killing God is an afterthought. And as soon as I said that out <laughs> loud to my parents, they kind of like, I, I literally, it's like one of those moments in the movies, they drop the knife and the fork <laughs> and they're like, listen, kid, right? You like, I, I obviously I didn't realize it at the time because, like, of course, it's obvious that killing God is an afterthought in this trilogy meant for you know young preteens like myself. Sure. That's what all the great trilogies are about. No, they were not. I was very <laughs> far out in left field. Little did my parents know, and I'm sure they do. Sure. Um, but yeah, the the school sent this note home. It's like, please be careful when you send your kids to this. If you send your kids to this movie, I'm like. No, I'm going to go see it. Um, right. <laughs> it turns out, turns out, uh, I understand that the movie has a lot of love and dedication set into it. Mm-hmm. This movie 
should have been an HBO miniseries. And now that it is, I'm very happy. Would I have loved to have seen Daniel Craig and Nicole Kidman reprise their roles? Sure. Yeah. Oh my God. Daniel sure. Craig is Daniel Craig's one Incredible. of those actors that I'm like, do you need a middle-aged British man to act all suave and Pierce <laughs> right. Brosnan isn't available? May yeah. I offer you the other James Bond? I agree. And it's hard yeah. to beat Sam Elliott with the Jackrabbit. Oh, oh, you have seen you, him. You think I don't get these references, Don? <laughs> I, I just kind of, here's the thing. I kind of go into every conversation assuming that I am the weird one because oh, for so no. much of my life I've been told I was. <laughs> same, same. I just leaned Ugh. hard into it. <laughs> so did I, but it was only for Lord of the Rings. And right? it's, only, it's only come to fruition 20 years later as I'm finally like, <laughs> Hey, do you want to join my Patreon and listen right. to me talk more? It's like, <laughs> you mean you really want to? It's been it's been one of those moments where I'm like, oh, this is like, this is real. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad you kept with it. I do have two. Me too. I have two Lord of the Rings questions that I don't know the answer to, and Ooh. you're the guy. Happy. Are to you help. ready? Are you? Ready? I'm ready. Bring okay. it up. Bring it up. Number. I'll I'll do one that's kind of uh, not as it might be easier to answer. Okay. So number okay. one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Has Gondor always been the first line of defense this entire time? So they've been like an almost never ending war, keeping Mordor's forces at bay this whole time. So the Gondor that we know that Boromir talks about has been fighting on the front lines for thousands of years. However, okay. there have been breaks in between. I will say okay. Boromir, Boromir's care. And uh, you know what? I'll reference this because Early on, I used to go on what was called the Boromir rant, yeah. where I defended Boromir <laughs> because he is such a misunderstood character. Agreed. Boromir, to me, represents the faults in all of us, Agreed. in that which one of us would not take something very powerful to save their homeland? Mm -hmm. And I will, I, I can't even believe I'm referencing this because we talked about it before. Who among us wouldn't think, oh, well, what if we just gave the fighter jets to Ukraine? Or what if Ukraine just, you know, what if in the 90s, Clinton didn't take away their nuclear arsenal? That right. temptation to use that as a line of defense mm -hmm. is, uh, to me, uh, personally, a parallel to Boromir. Because sure. he's watched most of his friends die. He's watched most of his family. Faramir, uh, you know, is this little brother that, you know, looks up to him his father puts the weight of the world on his shoulders his mom's dead his friends are dead and you know people look to him as the savior that isn't the king but right. needs to be that in case so when 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 gondor is that line of defense it's been about 60 years and boromir is i believe in his 40s um Damn. in in the books canonically so it has literally been his entire life and most uh, of his dad's entire life so it's been rough wow yeah i think about that i'm like okay okay so it makes sense yeah the second yep. one mm -hmm. is there so we have gondor you have the white mm -hmm. tree you have this you have rohan which is the horse lords and you have the mm -hmm. horse the two-parter question number one are the rohan people mm -hmm. uh, that's that came out weird <laughs> As a, yeah. <laughs> the Rohanians are <laughs> I'm not even entirely sure what they're called. The Rohanians? Yeah, that, I mean they're they're called the Rohirrim, but I think right. that's just the army that rides. I thought on so the too. We're gonna call them the Rohirrim. Are they yeah, that's fair. also that's fair. descendants of Numenor? <clears throat> um not entirely. Okay. So the way the way the mythos works is there were a bunch, there were a bunch of people wandering middle earth forming tribes settlements minor cities nothing crazy okay. meanwhile out in the middle of the ocean numenor is um getting basically the um oh god you know how dubai is like in the middle of the desert and is has a very uh distinct wealth gap yes yeah Numenor is the high tier of the wealth gap, ah. and Middle Earth is the rest of the the slums, shall we say? Gotcha. Um, okay. Okay. Technology is not as far advanced. Their ships aren't as powerful. Their weapons aren't as strong. They break more easily. Mm -hmm. So, um, when the kings come over to Middle Earth after Numenor falls, they're like, "Well, shoot, there's like ten or so ships that we have left because mm -hmm. everyone else is dead." 
because uh, sure. they all sailed over to the Undying Lands to, sorry, this is a very long-winded answer. I love it. I love it. So um, a bunch of the humans in Numenor sailed over to the Undying Lands to try and steal the elves' immortality from the lesser gods of Middle-earth. It didn't Ooh. work, and they got stuck under, I think it's called the Caves of the Forgotten. Okay. And, you know, there's like this rumor that like at, on the last day, um, they will rise and sure. fight. Um, but the, everybody else that was left is like, all right, cool. We're in Middle Earth now. We're super smart compared to pretty much everybody else that's a human here. Sure. The elves are kind of doing their own thing and they shun us. The dwarves are kind of meh. And there's this weird, you know, race relations. Um, not too dissimilar to what we experience here in mm-hmm. the United States and that there are minorities who are being you know sure. uh, marginalized right and um i don't say that to laugh as like it's a joke but no like, totally it very much mimics real world life sure um so gondor um and minas tirith which is originally uh-huh. called minas anor um tower of guard becomes this bastion and this symbol of uh numenor that was and like oh, these beacons of hope got it so all a bunch of these tribes uh, start like forming alliances with the much like it's it's basically like like Amazon like what companies sure. can partner with Amazon fastest sure. okay. and so Rohan got lucky and they sided with Gondor in the war because it was you know they were living in that land for a certain time again I'm I'm paraphrasing and sure. simplifying <laughs> way too much right. um, but basically the the rulers of Gondor were like hey thanks for helping us you can have this land and the people that didn't get that land are the people we see that are who are called the wild men are all called the gun lendings uh-huh. and so the the people that you see saruman recruiting as like these these uh uh raiders and pillagers are yeah. basically just like the wildlings from game of thrones they got the short end of the stick and they backed the wrong person on the side of the war that probably could have gone either way and okay okay yeah, yeah. which is why Here's the segue, which yeah. is why I'm so excited for the new Lord of the Rings animated movie yeah. that is coming out in April of 2024. Same. War of so excited. The War Same. of the Rohirrim looks so good because I think it's going to be the first time that a modern audience that grew up with the trilogy is like, what do you mean there is an adapt adaptation of Tolkien? beyond peter jackson's trilogy right because yeah. they were this, they were the staple right they were the star yep. wars prequels yep and i have this horrible feeling that the lord of the rings tv show is going to be the equivalent of the star wars prequels in that they're going to garner hate no matter what they do right so you might as well just enjoy them if you do um, sure but the the animated movie is the first time i really see the ability to say like oh hey do you like anime? Yeah. Cool, because it's directed by the guy that has directed uh, Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex mm-hmm. and the Blade Runner Black Lotus. And also he was involved in DuckTales. Right. Kenji Kamiyama was involved in That's the in Trinity. Duck- <laughs> 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 there are a bunch of other anime, but they're not nearly as important as DuckTales. That's, I've said um, this for years. <laughs> <laughs> a woohoo. That's, that's right. That's I, a that's a Ducktales reference for those. I wondered that if there and, and the second half to that. I wonder mm-hmm. is there a sigil that represents the entirety of the realm of men? Oh goodness! I, I honestly I don't think so. But the okay. the realms of the realms of men are so fractured. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I thought. That, like that you he, here's what here's what I will say. Right, you could probably make the argument that like Numenor is the iphone android of Uh the of the middle earth human uh sigils where like they represent the highest and the loftiest and the most expensive and most of their wealth is built on slave labor and capitalism and it's in its late stages and we should all overthrow it anyway sorry (laughs) (laughs) sorry am i getting off track anyway um (laughs) thank you um but you can think of the rest of those of those humans, you know, the Dunlendings, the Haradrim, mm-hmm. the Corsairs of Umbar, the Easterlings. Right. As I don't look at them as like the bad guys that Sauron tempted. I'm just like they're just victims of circumstance. Sure. And while they don't represent, you know, the best of the best in that. Oh God, I hate even saying this. In the way that like an iPhone or an Android represents the. Um, you know, the best technology that can give us in the, in a capitalist market. Sure. Um, there, there is, there is a lot of fracturing within, within humanity, within middle earth, unfortunately. And, and I, 
I hate that it's I hate sometimes how right Tolkien was right in his <laughs> in his mimicry of humanity in real life because yeah you know you you look at um what one of the th- actually hmm name drop when I was on the zoom call with Sean Astin yes of course day, I've heard of him <laughs> yes yes um god I hate doing that because it makes me feel like <laughs> such an ass but like, I love it because it's really cool <laughs> uh, it is really cool, but at the same time, I'm like, oh, does that make me seem like one of those people who are just like, eh, no, nope. sure. oh, cool, thank you. And anyone disagrees, mm, they got to deal with this. Uh, <laughs> I got your back. You. you have my sword, uh, Don. Oh, well, now I'm just <laughs> blushing. When I was when I was talking to Sean, he brought up this amazing point that you know, obviously his influences in World War One are like a copy and paste of Mordor, right? The trenches of World War One and Passchendaele and the Somme. Yep. Or Mordor. But then you asked Tolkien when they were published, it's like, oh, well, Sauron is Hitler, right? And he's like, no. Right. <laughs> and, then, and I'm like, okay, but like every once in a while I'll go back and like, he's totally Hitler. But then like shit like the Ukraine situation happens and Putin invades. And I'm like, right. oh, oh no, this is this is a very real situation. Mm-hmm. And Tolkien used his experiences. And it just so happens that history has just kind of kept repeating itself since the 1910s and 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s when he was writing and publishing these books. Uh, Time is a flat circle and nothing ever truly changes. And Mm -hmm. the arc of true justice is long and will take our lifetime. People are people. that's yeah. a great way to put it. People are people. And it is one of those moments that I, I look back on the real world and like, oh, yeah, it's it's not Hitler. It's just that there's more than one version of a tyrant. Right. Right. It's just yeah. evil in humans. It's like it can it can have a lot of vessels, man, but it can. Uh, it can. We're both yeah. all capable of it. It is the yin and yang of existence. Mm. It's Ooh. bonkers. It is. It, <laughs> <laughs> yin and yang. Also bonkers. Yep. It's my, yeah, that's my story. All of it, everything. Oh my God, you've got the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my story. For those listening, he's yeah. got the yin yang tattoo. Yeah, yeah. On my, his, uh... my life story is tattooed on my arm. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> that's why I actually I asked because I've wanted a Lord of the Rings tattoo forever. Mm. And my, I, I love Aragorn. He's like who mm-hmm. I aspire to be. But mm-hmm. I super relate to Theoden and Boromir. Oh, and okay. so much of it. And I think out of all the characters arcs, Theoden's my favorite just to see oh. like from mm-hmm. completely under Grima warm tongues control mm. to, you know, answering Gondor's call for aid. This whole like it's beautiful. Just it so is. human, you know, and yeah. I feel like, oh, it is. It I feel is. like both of those are just that is that is man. The capabilities, all three of those is all of us. So I was like, is there a symbol that encompasses those three that I could get tattooed? And it's like the facets of man but also incorporating may, it but may i make a suggestion please then? do i have never suggested a ta- well here we actually, go that, that's we not go. true i've i've given many tattoo suggestions but right. <laughs> this is this is the first one i'm doing publicly in front okay. of an audience okay even okay. if it is pre-recorded Talk to me. um aragorn's name is his true name is aragorn but right. he did not know his true name until uh he was in his 20s he was Correct fostered in Rivendell by Mm -hmm. Elrond after his father passed away. Mm -hmm. And the name that he was given by Elrond is Estelle, Mm -hmm. which is the Mm -hmm. elvish word for hope. And I think the three characters Mm -hmm. that you just talked about embody the different ways that hope comes to fruition from out, out from under the thumb of, of a, of a trusted friend who's turned evil mm-hmm. be- becoming one in your own with with Aragorn and I think you know if you need someone to translate it into elvish I certainly know a few people that like could help this. with that I like this a lot we'll, we'll talk more after the yeah, after we'll, we're done recording we'll figure it out we we'll will figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> what's if you had like uh uh what's something that you're looking forward to and you hope is in the Amazon series Oh yeah, I that that is that is uh that is a great question, and now I have to think about it. Right. Um, because a- as of right now, I have kind of gone in with the idea of I don't want to have any expectations. I'm the same way. Um, but actually, I will say this. I will say this. I hope that we see the two blue wizards 
And I, I hope, I hope that whatever Amazon comes up with, because obviously I've got head cannons in my head, they may show up in my new, uh, unpredicted party what if the they took the I eagles to mordor it. ttrpg stay tuned <laughs> um youtube.com slash john marshall 72 sorry i have to love do it, it every time it's going anyway, in the tags anyway uh, i love they're, it they're Thank not you. getting away from it <laughs> <laughs> i really hope that we see uh the expanded upon uh stories of those two i also hope that in the same way that they replaced uh the male elf glorfindel with arwen yeah, yeah. to give more female representation. Uh-huh. I hope we see that happen with Galadriel, with Disa, Ooh. with all of the, with because, right, like one of the things that I said in one of my videos a couple of weeks ago, back when all of this big air quotes again, controversy was sure. coming out with the Lord of the Rings TV show and people were being butthurt about the fact that women were involved in it, Crazy. Um, which is insane to me, but, you know, I digress. When, Ar- when Arwen shows up, people that didn't read the books were like, oh, cool, yeah. People yep. that did read the books were like, hang on, that's supposed to be Glorfindel and it's supposed to be a dude. But like, right. oh, I see why they changed it. They gave Arwen more agency, more presence sure. in the story. And it was awesome, so yep. we let it slide. And right. I said that in the video. I was like, it's <laughs> yep. awesome, we let it slide. Yep. So I, I am also hoping that the changes that they make Mm-hmm. especially when it is geared towards the BIPOC uh, community and the the women that they are adding yeah. either as the new characters or as tried and true characters like Galadriel, mm-hmm. that the changes that they make are awesome. So we let it slide. I love it. If they're not, I'll be the first one to call it out. But, uh, you know, I'm going to I'm going to try and enjoy this as much as I can. I, I don't That's know right. if I'll ever. Yeah, I don't know if I'll ever get another TV adaption uh, exactly. in my lifetime. Got to enjoy it. I agree. I yeah. agree. And just like that, Don, we've been talking for over an hour already. Oh, my God. You yes, survived. we have. I, <laughs> I've never died on a podcast before, so that wasn't really the baseline. That's but, right. Okay. That's true. That's true. I don't want to say anyone else has or hasn't for legal reasons, but, mm. dude, it has been a blast getting to know you and hanging out. This was so fun. It was. Likewise. You uh, you ever want to have me back on to talk uh, Star Wars lore or his Dark Materials lore? Right. You let or me Halo. know. Or Halo. I oh, have God. a guy now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. Also, hang on, just j- while we're here, yeah. uh, the Dune series, Ender's Game. Um, my wife knows more about Harry Potter. You should have her on. She sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we don't talk about the author anymore. That's um, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, let me know. Uh, this, Dude, was, this was done. a blast. It was. So before I release you back into the wild, I got to ask, where can people find you? Where can they find your stuff? Talk to me. Absolutely. So obviously, if people are listening and they already know me, I'm on TikTok, Don Marshall 72. Mm-hmm. It's pretty much my screen name across all social media platforms, YouTube, Smart Instagram, man. Twitch. I will, however, and this is the first time I'm saying this on a podcast. Ooh. If you go to the rest of my social medias, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and you like all of my stuff, I just launched a Patreon about nine yeah, days ago. Did. And the security that the Patreon has given me in terms of one, creative freedom, and sure. two, financial ability to finance all of the other projects yeah. that I want to do. <laughs> sure. It's been amazing. So if you feel so inclined, search Don Marshall on Patreon. It would mean the world if uh, folks were um, liked my content enough to feel like they could support me there and uh, follow for more obscure Lord of the Rings facts. <laughs> Perfect landing. I love it. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. There you'll find my demos, films, and a bunch of other really fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. 
Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to pick you up some sweet gear. Also, I've made a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly and get early releases of the shows, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Daryl, Daz, Ben, Victor, Jim, and Chris. Your support means so, so much to me, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.